How's it going everybody? Daner here with North Central Coins and today we're going to be getting into the history of the Canadian $1,000 bill. The Canadian $1,000 bill was first introduced in the year 1935 and the design of this banknote changed several times over the years incorporating different portraits and scenes until it was officially discontinued in the year 2000 due to organized crime and money laundering. Believe it or not, even though the Canadian $1,000 bill was discontinued in the year 2000, it is still accepted at Canadian banks. It won't be accepted at stores and generally in the public, but banks still accept them as legal tender. So if you do find a hoard or stash of these $1,000 bills, you can still cash them in to this day. So as far as Canadian banknotes are concerned, this is definitely a video I am really looking forward to and a topic I'm super interested in. I really hope you guys are as well. If you are, please hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you are new, and also hit that bell notification so you can see my new videos as they are being released. And then what do you say we get into the history of the Canadian $1,000 bill? Let's get it, guys. Banknotes, also known as bills, or paper money, are an essential part of the Canadian economy. These notes are denominated into Canadian dollars, which are represented by the symbols CAD, C with a money sign, or just a money sign locally. Currently, banknotes are available in five different denominations, 5, 10, 20, 50, and $100 denominations. The Bank of Canada is responsible for issuing all current notes and it released its first series of notes in the year 1935. Since then, the Canadian Banknote Company has been contracted to produce the Canadian notes. The 1935 series of Canadian currency was unique in that it included both $25 and $500 denominations. However, their existence was short-lived. The $25 note was withdrawn from circulation on May 18, 1937, while stacks of unissued 1935 $500 notes were destroyed later in February of 1938. Issued $500 notes were also recalled and withdrawn from circulation just five months later. In more recent times, there have been significant changes to Canadian currency. The one, two, and thousand dollar notes were all withdrawn from circulation in 1989, 1996, and 2000, respectively. The one and two dollar denominations were replaced with coins affectionately known as the loony and toony. The loonie replaced both the $1 bill and the previous Voyager dollar coin, which remains legal tender to this day in Canadian bank institutions. The $1,000 note was removed at the request of the Solicitor General of Canada and the Royal Canadian Mounted Police as it was discovered that they were being used for money laundering and organized crime. These changes reflect the evolution of Canadian currency and the efforts to combat illegal activities. As we move forward, it is important to continue to adapt and improve our currency to meet the needs of our society. In recent years, the Bank of Canada has introduced a new series of polymer banknotes. These notes were introduced into circulation between November 2011 and November 2013. These polymer notes are more durable and secure than their paper counterparts, making them a popular choice amongst Canadians. If you're interested in viewing banknotes issued in Canada, you can visit the Bank of Canada Museum in Ottawa. Here you can learn about the history of Canadian banknotes and see example of bills and notes from different eras. Overall, banknotes are an important part of the Canadian economy. They play a crucial role in facilitating transactions and commerce. Whether you're using a $5 bill to buy that double-double at Tim Hortons or you're using a $100 bill to make a larger purchase, banknotes are essential tool for Canadians. The Bank of Canada issues notes, but the production of banknotes is outsourced to the Canadian Banknote Company. This is done in accordance with the specifications and requirements of the Bank of Canada. All wording on the notes appears in both Canada's official languages, English and French. Previously, banknotes were printed on paper, composed of pure cotton fiber. However, starting in 2011, cotton fiber was discontinued and replaced by a synthetic polymer. The last of the paper banknotes were made available in November 2013. This change was made to improve the durability and security of Canadian banknotes. The new polymer banknotes are much more resistant to wear and tear as well as counterfeiting. They also have enhanced security features such as holographic windows and raised ink. 
Overall, the Bank of Canada is committed to ensuring the safety and reliability of Canadian banknotes by outsourcing production to a trusted partner and implementing new technologies. They are able to provide Canadians with high-quality banknotes that meet their needs. In recent years, there has been a significant reduction in the number of counterfeit notes in circulation thanks to the efforts made to combat this issue in Canada. The number of counterfeit notes passed annually reached its peak in 2004 with a staggering 553,000 notes passed. However, since then, the number has decreased annually with only 53,536 notes passed in 2010. One of the primary reasons for this reduction in counterfeiting is the introduction of the new Frontier series of banknotes. These banknotes are made using a polymer substrate, which significantly improves their security compared to the previously used fabric. Interestingly, the shift to polymer was initially viewed as too expensive, even as Canada's counterfeiting problem continued to escalate. Despite the higher production cost of polymer notes, 19 cents compared to 9 cents for a typical cotton paper note, the benefits of increased security have made them a preferred choice. As a result, all older cotton paper banknotes prior to the 2013 polymer series are now considered unfit for circulation due to their lack of modern security features, such as a metallic stripe. Financial institutions are required to return these banknotes to the Bank of Canada, which will destroy them. However, individuals may keep these banknotes indefinitely. Overall, the introduction of the new Frontier series of banknotes has been a significant step forward in the fight against counterfeiting. By using a polymer substrate, these banknotes offer increased security and protection against counterfeiting, making them a valuable addition to Canada's currency system. Counterfeiting is a serious issue that plagues many countries around the world. To measure the extent of this problem, a system borrowed from chemistry known as parts per million or PPM is used. Typically, parts per million is used to determine the potency of molecules in a solution. However, in the context of counterfeiting, parts per million refers to the number of banknotes found in circulation for every 1 million general notes. In 1990, Canada's counterfeit ratio was an impressive 4 ppm, which ranked its currency among the most secure in the world. Unfortunately, the rise of powerful and affordable home computers, store-bought graphics software, easy-to-use scanners, and color ink printers led to a new generation of counterfeiters. As a result, the number of fake Canadian bills rose dramatically, reaching a high of 117 ppm by the year 1997. By 2004, Canada's counterfeit rate had ballooned to a staggering 470 ppm. Thankfully, the counterfeiting rate has since decreased significantly. In 2012, it reached its lowest point at 28 ppm. However, it has since started to rise modestly, reaching 36 ppm in 2014. The Bank of Canada's medium-term planning target is to stay below 30 ppm, which is a reasonable goal. It's also worth noting that most G20 nations use 50 ppm as their benchmark to stay below. This means that Canada's efforts to combat counterfeiting are paying off and its currency remains one of the most secure in the world. However, it's important to remain vigilant and continue to implement security measures to prevent counterfeiting. By doing so, Canada can maintain its reputation as a safe and secure place to do business. Now that we have discussed some of the history of the Canadian banknotes and bills, what do you say we discuss the $1,000 bill, which is the king of the Canadian bills, I would say one of the highest denominations ever produced. The Canadian $1,000 bill was initially designed to facilitate cash transactions between businesses and banks. It was commonly used by corporations, wealthy individuals, and high-value clients for transactions involving large amounts of money. It was also extremely popular in the black market and for other illegal transactions, as it allowed individuals to conduct large transactions without leaving a paper trail and transport large quantities of money without nearly as much real estate. In the 1950s, the Bank of Canada began tightening regulations on the use of $1,000 bills to try and reduce their use in illegal transactions. These regulations included requiring a government-issued ID for any transactions over $1,000 and also limiting the amount of cash that could be carried across the border. Despite these regulations, the $1,000 bill continued to be used in criminal activities such as money laundering and drug trafficking. In the 1970s, it was estimated that over 60% of all $1,000 bills in circulation were being used for illegal purposes. As a result, in 1988, the Bank of Canada announced that it would cease printing $1,000 bills. The goal was to reduce the availability of large denominations 
and thus discourage their use in criminal activities. However, the banknotes that were already in circulation continued to be legal tender. In 1991, the government took further measures to restrict the use of $1,000 bills. Banks were required to report any transactions over $10,000 to the Financial Transactions and Report Analysis Center of Canada, also known as FinTrack, which was established to combat money laundering and other financial crimes in Canada. Despite these measures, the use of $1,000 bills and illegal activities continued. In 1999, the Bank of Canada made the decision to discontinue the note entirely. The last $1,000 bills were printed in the year 2000, and the banknotes that were already in circulation were gradually withdrawn and destroyed. Today, a Canadian $1,000 bill is a rare sight even for some collectors. Some of the banknotes that were withdrawn from circulation are now selling at auctions for tens of thousands of dollars. The value of these notes is determined by several factors, including their condition, rarity, and historical significance. Although the $1,000 bill is no longer in circulation, its legacy lives on. The banknote played an important role in the history of Canadian currency and finance, and its impact can still be felt today. Its discontinuation was a significant step in the fight against money laundering and other financial crimes. The Bank of Canada's decision to discontinue the $1,000 bill was not without controversy. Some argued that it would have a negative impact on businesses and individuals that relied on cash transactions. Others believed that it was an important step in combating organized crime and protecting the integrity of the Canadian financial system. Despite these debates, the decision to discontinue the $1,000 bill was ultimately seen as necessary. The risks associated with the use of large denominations in criminal activities were too great to ignore. The government and the Bank of Canada took decisive action to address the issue and protect Canadians from the harmful effects of financial crime. Today, the security of the Canadian coin and paper money system is stronger and more secure than ever. The country is recognized globally as a leader in financial integrity and its banking regulations are amongst the most stringent in the world. The legacy of the $1,000 bill serves as a reminder of the role that currency and finance play in our society and the importance of maintaining strong financial systems and regulations. So in conclusion, the history of the Canadian $1,000 bill is definitely a fascinating one from its introduction in the year 1935 to the discontinuation in the year 2000. This banknote played an incredibly important role in Canadian currency and finance. Although its use was often associated with criminal activities, its legacy lives on as a reminder of the risks and challenges faced by the financial industry. And anyone watching this video from Canada or even from any other country, if you have an attic with all sorts of old goodies and treasures, I suggest you take a look through because even if you find a treasure trove of 1935 Canadian thousand dollar bills, you can still turn those in at Canadian banks. You can just take a trip over here to Canada if you're from another country and have yourself a nice little vacation. Also, another thing that I suggest is if you ever go to thrift stores, look through very old books, especially from the years 1935 to 1980. There is definitely an increased chance if you look through older books that they may have some of these bills inside of them and you may be able to make yourself some decent money. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash that thumbs up, hit that subscribe if you are new, and also please hit that bell notification so you can see more videos just like this. I have been putting out coin roll hunting videos and also rare and valuable videos detailing some of the most valuable coins from all around the world that you can look for and find whether you are coin roll hunting, looking through your pocket change, or you get a coin collection handed down to you. So I would appreciate if you guys would check some of my other videos out. But that's pretty much going to do it for this one, guys. I would also like to announce that I have partnered with Lighthouse Canada. They are one of the biggest and most reputable coin supply companies in North America. They have a selection and inventory with just about everything a coin collector could dream of when it comes to coin roll hunting and coin collecting. So I definitely suggest you go to their website and check them out and enter the promo code DANE20 at your checkout for 20% off of your order. This is an absolutely awesome deal. I would love to thank my friends over at Lighthouse Coins for providing me with this partnership. But that is pretty much going to be it for this one. So until the next one, everybody, peace out and have a good one, y'all.